It's the Career Seeker Show live on WPPM LP Philadelphia. Really excited today. It's one of those days. Every now and then you get a good day. And today indeed is a good day because we have the one and only Jamil Rush in the building. Listen, I would I would spout off his bio. I was looking at information mm. on you earlier today. By the way, as I was looking at information on you, I'm realizing that there's not a person in the world that has a bad thing to say about you. Even the <laughs> students that review you as a professor, uh, I guess at Temple, right? Yeah, yeah. Temple. They have nothing bad to say about you. I'm like, not even the students? No, so, yeah, so I, 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 I met Jamil. No, let me go ahead and just bio out. Jamil is, um, we, we, we brought him in today because uh, he's an HR expert, an HR pro, organizational development wizard and guru, but uh, he's president of the Sherm chapter here in Philadelphia. Uh, but with that being said, Jamil Rush, ladies and gentlemen. Also a diversity uh, expert. Diversity oh. expert indeed. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and, and, here's the crazy, <laughs> yeah, and here's the crazy thing. We got Jamil to come in today a day off of his vacation. Like you yeah. got back like yesterday or today? You yesterday. got back today. Yeah. Yesterday. I mean he's super refreshed. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Fresh out of Phoenix. Fresh out of, <laughs> Fresh out of Phoenix. No what? you might be on to something there. You might be on to something there. Yeah, I'm like reading the reviews. They're like, oh, he's the great, he's the best professor ever. He's a, if you need to know something about HR, please take his class. Uh, had the opportunity to meet Mr. Rush several, several years ago uh, as he was supporting some uh, career service efforts that we were doing, that we were having, uh, I guess in conjunction with the Urban League of Philadelphia. Yeah. I, I find things, I find HR people to be really interesting because I think there's an honesty to them, but it's a, it's a very tailored and covered honesty but there was an HR person that I know really well and she always speaks the truth to me and I appreciate that uh, her name is Carla Hill she works for the city of Philadelphia and when she saw you walk in the room she smiled and said he's a really good guy and, and, and I was like, you know what? That's, that about sums it up. <laughs> <laughs> that about sums it up for me. It's, you know, it's There's a lot of love in this room right yeah. now. So, so let me introduce you real quick. Uh, Tiffany Sutherland. Uh, Tiffany is our resident career coach. Alberta Bertolino, uh, our resident recruitment coach. <laughs> I always call him the super recruiter. Uh, but uh, you guys have a lot in common we mm -hmm. as well. You guys have played on the same field, uh, mm -hmm. I guess, for a little while. Not at the same time, though. Not at the same time. Oh, no. you mean at the same company? Yeah, you yeah, guys were no, at the same company, no. but not at the same time. Not at the same time. Right. Her no. legacy is still there. Her legacy is still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She lives on. But he and I had met a, at a diversity event. It might have been at your former company. It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think while. so. Yeah, but a long time ago. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This goes so. to show you this world is small. It's a small That's right. Be careful, you know, be careful what you do. It's interesting because I always speak to people. I said, never, you know, they always say, don't badmouth your former employer. Mm -hmm. yep. But like a lot of people in HR service, like, I'll just call Jamil. Like, I, all right, well, guess what? That's the company that Jamil was at. <laughs> you know, like, if you're if you're telling me something, I can actually just make the call. I don't even have to wait for your reference. I'll yeah, just make the yeah, call. Definitely, um, definitely. So it's just really interesting. So, Jamil, uh, big year for you. Big year. You just, uh, I guess, you're no longer president-elect. You're president. I'm a full two months in, and I didn't break it yet. So all that's right. good. Oh. <laughs> and you were able to take a vacation. Well, that's and I, good, yeah, right? a whole yeah. two days. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh... Jamil was telling me something really interesting. We were talking on the phone, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's funny how, how this even came about. I was on Spring Garden at the uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, and right there. Yeah. I'm walking out, and Jamil is walking down Spring Garden. Like okay. seven, and I'm like, hey, I need you to come on the show. We're like, <laughs> we, we like grip each other and shake each other's hands. I'm rushing, he's rushing. I'm like, I need you to come on the Career Seeker show. He's like, no problem. And that was the end of That's the conversation. Perfect. That's, That's perfect. perfect. That's all you need. <laughs> So, so Jamil was telling me about this process with Sherm. So you're kind of in waiting for two years to kind of oh, sit and right? see how it works. Yeah. And then you have a two-year commitment after the fact. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. if, if we can't do anything else as an HR organization, mm -hmm. we got to do succession plan. No, I was going to say, right, right that on yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you do two years president-elect, so you're in training, two years as president, and then two years as Oh, my gosh. President. To mentor so it's the actually president a six coming behind. Oh, yeah, it's a six year wow. Wow. That's dedication right there. Yeah. It, well, it's a great organization. Yeah, so it yeah, makes yeah, you yeah, want definitely. to stick around sure. and make sure the person behind you is being successful. You know what? Help us out here. So for our listeners, uh, it, can you explain the purpose of, of SHRM? Absolutely. So uh, I'm president of the Philadelphia chapter, I should clarify. There yes. is a national arm of the Society for Human Resource Management. 
uh, we here at Philly, we have about 1,300 members locally, wow. so we're one of the largest chapters in the nation. They're, they're, it's what you call a super mega chapter. Oh, a lot of adjectives. Yeah, right. Wow. Super duper super chapter. Mega. Ginormous <laughs> super mega. No, tell me here because is there <laughs> also dinosaur. like a Valley Forge chapter or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of local chapters. So we so, have a so bunch of sister chapters. So it's 1,300 in Philly. Just here. In Philly. Wow. So there's wow. a Valley Forge chapter, Lehigh Valley, Southeastern Pennsylvania. We're surrounded by other Could sister chapters. Could you imagine if, if, if all of them were part of the Philly chapter as well? Oh, that would yeah. be <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> maybe let's like, not imagine that. Let me give you two months. I'm only two months in, bro. Let me just. <laughs> let me get I'm one chapter. <laughs> Um, so phenomenal organization, we really focus on this connection between business and human resources and helping to equip both business professionals and talent management practices, but also HR professionals and emerging trends, topics, building up their network, all these things that they need to become a better professional um, in the space. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are some of your duties as president? Yeah. Yeah. So we have, <laughs> we have a pretty large board. There's about... I, don't know, I lost count at somewhere around 23, 25 oh, board wow. members. That's that makes sense for a 1,300 yeah. person yeah. chapter. Um, and it's a working board. So our board members, I mean, they roll up their sleeves and they get some stuff done. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a bunch of different uh, committees underneath that. Things, everything from programming. We have a committee focused around emerging leaders. Mm -hmm. So early career professionals and transitioners. Um, we also have traditional association management stuff. So legal, finance, mm -hmm. marketing, communications. Mm -hmm. One of the best things I think about the presidency within Philly Sherm is that you get to come in, develop your own platform. Okay. So this is what is the chapter going to focus on for the next couple of years under your presidency. Uh, so our former president, her name was Charity Hughes. She focused around education. Uh, mine is actually going to be focused around workforce development and workforce readiness. Okay. And this idea that in Philadelphia, we have the largest poverty rate of large cities right. in the country, right? Um, at the same time, when we talk to our partner organizations, top five always in their business concerns is, I don't have the right people mm -hmm. to fill my job. Right. That doesn't make sense to me. You can't have a, a you can't city, have both, yeah, that says people can't find meaningful work. Yeah. And then companies that are saying, yeah. we can't find people to do the work we so need to do. There's a lot of restrictions companies put on themselves. There's a lot to it. The so. right people, yeah. And I think the, the role we can play as an HR organization is really breaking down those barriers. Mm -hmm. So how do we educate our organizations with what are the, the places out there where you can find talent pools or untapped talent mm -hmm. pools and how can you get into that? And then what are the benefits that exist for an organization in partnering that way? And then how can we let, make sure that these workforce development and workforce readiness groups are preparing people in the right way that okay. make them marketable for the mm -hmm. skills that our organizations really need. So pretty excited about that. We have yeah. a brand new workforce development team and, and board members who are leading that up and, and they're doing a phenomenal job. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have some uh, education and programming themed around it as well as some, some other work that we're getting involved with. So I know in a lot of uh, boards that the people don't necessarily have to be in that space. So are all the board members HR professionals or do you have people who are in the finance industry or, or whatnot? We actually pride our pride ourselves on getting non-HR professionals it, involved it, with our board. It. So yeah. we have business leaders, we have lawyers, we have marketing communications people, nonprofit uh, members. It brings that diversity of our group in, mm -hmm. and we're actually able to get better ideas and better sure. outputs because of it. Sure. Oh, diversity leads to better outcomes. Yes. Oh, very, very <laughs> real real when thing. I, when, I make, when I make my calls, I'm trying to tell people this. Like, this is why I'm out here. So, <laughs> so one question that I think that a lot of people, because I'm I'm a I work in recruiting at a law firm, but I don't sit in the HR department. So I think there's a lot of um, sometimes confusion or just not understanding of what does it mean to be a human resources professional, and can you be a human resources professional if you're not in an HR department mm -hmm. proper? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a you know yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't think you need to sit in HR to be in HR. Honestly, I don't think you need to have an HR title to be in <laughs> right. HR. Yeah, we talk a, point. a yeah. lot about small businesses where you have one person who's playing the role of HR, finance, mm. marketing, Legal. communications, <laughs> right. legal, yeah. CEO, all of that, right? Yeah. And so the idea that what we talk about from a Sherm perspective is practical for business leaders. Mm -hmm. And we try to talk about framing in that light to say this is for business leaders, not just HR titles or HR professionals. Right, right. And, and, uh, just I want to 
kind of venture back into this diversity piece. Uh, are you the first African American male president at Sherman? I know before you, Gloria, and I think Charity was it Charity? Charity, Charity, yeah. and then Gloria. Yes. Are you the first yeah. black male president? Uh, that I can remember. I don't know if that's true or not, but certainly in my in recent times. Yeah. Around and and you, well, you've been telling me you've been involved since college with with this ch this chapter here. I have. So I've been involved for the last thirteen years or so. Mm -hmm. I think so. I, I got involved my um, sophomore year in undergrad in the Temple University chapter of it. Okay. And kind of graduated on to the Philly chapter, so mm -hmm. it's a nice pipeline right. as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's a yeah. that's a huge success that's story true. for the organization as well. Yeah. to know that they were able to to. I'm sure. I mean, with a chapter of 1,300 people, that success has happened in lots of different it's instances. But to that. see yeah. come from mm -hmm. a collegiate yeah. chapter to go yeah. all the way up to president is awesome. It's we, awesome. We actually do a pretty our emerging leaders group. They they do a phenomenal job of building up talent. So okay. we actually partner with six university local universities: yeah. Villanova, Temple. Mm -hmm. um, a few others, I don't want to name them all up. I'll forget some <laughs> going through. But Somebody was going to say, hold on. Wait, 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 what about us? Right? <laughs> the one time right? We love all our partners. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if you look at our board, you'll see a ton of leaders from mm -hmm. that used to be uh, local student chapter leaders that we've ah. built in. So it's sort of a rite of passage. You graduated, yeah. come get involved, join oh, a committee, awesome. and then people tend to stay in that vein. If you're a volunteer leader in undergrad, you tend to want to continue to be in that yeah, space. Yeah, that's right. How did you make a decision, and you, I think you said your sophomore year at Temple you were involved, mm -hmm. how did you decide to pursue the HR space as a, because what I think I was reading through uh, Bachelor's of Business Administration, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. How did you decide that HR was going to be the thing for you, uh -huh. or, or OD in general even? Oh, by dumb luck, right? That's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's <laughs> Uh, so I didn't I didn't know what HR was right. until I got to school. So the way Temple works, I, I came in as a business management major. So 17, 18 year old me, mm -hmm. I'm going to go to college. I'm going to manage a business. Right. right? This, that's, <laughs> that's it. It's just that simple. Uh, so Temple told us on our first day in orientation, all of you who are business management majors, that's not a real major. You need to pick you something to, pick to actually track. focus on. Uh, so whereas I thought my life was figured out at 18 years old, <laughs> I was throwing a monkey wrench. Little did you know. Little did I know there's a real world out there. Um, so I, the beautiful thing about the program is they force you to take all the functional practices in, in nice. their undergrad. So I had to take finance, marketing, human resources, all those things, employment law uh, as part of my curriculum. And then with that, I took this HR course, uh, Organizational Leadership. And it was the first time ever out of all those classes that anything appealed to me and this idea of managing the human resource within mm, the company, right? Okay. So gotcha. that's your role of optimizing it. So SHRM was actually the reason I picked it as a major. I got involved with SHRM to understand the profession okay. more. Oh, okay. And that's okay. how I decided, yeah, I can do this yeah. longer term. Okay. It, it's one of those things where it's, uh, you know, you speak to your children about this and you say, just go, just get in the game. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to figure it all out at the beginning, yeah. and and you know even as I work through some of these employment programs, and I want to speak to you about some of the things that you guys have going on, but uh, a lot of times everybody wants to make that decision right now, and I'm look like, you're yeah. twenty. Like, well, sometimes stop. the like, colleges do that. Too. Yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. It's, and that's a and that's a, that can be a whole other conversation for another day. But I think what's powerful for any of our listeners who are in college or who are trying to decide what they want to do. Your major and your track had a mm. practical, real-world implication. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what allowed you to go into a career, although you could have ended up making a different decision. But if you have a, a major that does not lead to, like, I, I, I love, I have very good friends who are English majors, but mm. if right. you don't know what you right. want exactly. to do with an English major, right. you're majors not, you can't say, I have an English major. Yeah. I, like, we all speak English if we were, you know what I mean? Like, we, I speak English if I'm here, right? Yeah. So it's just like... Um, you have to, I'm sorry, that sounded We're bad, but to I know, I know, that, I said it, and I was like, you know what I mean. Talk to the HR guy about that. Right, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Talk to the HR guy about that. You know what I mean, but it's true, it's true. You understand what my heart is, you understand what my heart is, but, it, yeah. but my point is. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Tiffany's going to be in, uh, what was it, was it Geno's or Pat's? Who had yeah, Tiffany down there? Geno's, it was Geno's. Oh my gosh. Hey, anyway, the point is, I get pick a point. major that is tangible that has a real world implication right. as far as what you can then do with that mm -hmm. outside of work 
outside right. of school. Right. right. But to Kenneth's point, you can figure it out just along go, the way. Just right. Yeah, I just, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. And, and I'm a big believer. You know me. I'm one of those people that it's like, I think there's no plan B. Figure out what it is and go towards it. Yeah. And, and you don't can change go back your plan. In. But the plan can change. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Can change. Exactly. Right. So, uh, so, Jamil, we were having a conversation. And uh, you were telling me, and this is the, probably the piece that I've missed, uh, I guess, in my in my prior knowledge of SHRM, but you were speaking about some of the workforce initiative things and things of that nature that you guys have committed to to putting into place as, you know, under your presidency and things of that nature. Can you can you elaborate or talk to our listeners about that stuff? Yeah, and we, we actually, I sorry I alluded to this a little early sure. on in the conversation, but uh, we just built up, part of my platform as presidency is around this workforce readiness piece, and I, I just uh, built, pulled over for two brand new board members, Patty McConnell, who works for the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and mm-hmm. HR there, and then Keena Sears, who works in uh, the workforce development team at Drexel University as well, to mm-hmm. say, hey, I, th- this is my dream, right? I want Philly Sherm to be to help to serve the Philadelphia area better by helping to up level the talent within our community. Are you from here? You're f- oh yeah, I'm born and raised. What, what neighborhood are you from? You mind me asking? North Philly. Okay, all right, yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Central High School two six two. Oh, oh my God! I, saw that. I, was like, I, I know that's a big deal here. It's a very very big deal. I was like, all right. Is it two seven two? Yeah. So 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 for all of our listeners that don't live in the Philadelphia, the immediate Philadelphia area, when you attend Central High School. You just uh, acknowledge it with a number. That's your graduating yeah. class number. So uh, he is from the 262nd class yeah. to Correct. graduate But you can't from figure out school. always the year because right. they... Here's the they year. Be, yeah. Well, no, <laughs> before they had, so they only had, they graduated you twice uh, a year. Really? So then they, instead of, okay. so you could have two graduating classes in the same mm-hmm. year. And so that's why they're moving to the, the history Central lesson from Alberta. Uh, I know. My daughter is a proud graduate of Central Hospital. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, I, I want to use my power for good, right? So how can I take this organization <laughs> that now I'm, I'm at the helm over uh, and help to up-level the skill of the community that I came from? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then at the same time, it has to be something that, that serves our, our member organizations, our partner sure. organizations. People need talent. They need good people who can do good work. Right. So why not create those synergies where you can solve for both of those needs? Mm-hmm. Um, so we've been getting involved in a few things. We're really right at the cusp of it right now. Um, serving with the Commerce Department has a new workforce development committee that they've been pulling together. So Philly Sherman is a part of that. We actually have a program that's going to be going on in October. That's going to be a, a bunch of panelists from the workforce development community talking to our membership about how you can create these talent pools and tap into this untapped talent market. And we'll have additional programming around it and hopefully be pulling together some focus groups within HR to talk about some of those barriers that exist now and talk about how we can remove them for the people who are doing this work. So I'm tired of just thinking there. about it. Sound, yeah. It sounds so, it's such important work. Right. Yeah. It's a, a big undertaking, but absolutely necessary. You know, I do think that, uh, you know, with you being from North Philadelphia and just some of the things I've seen through working with uh, Project Home and Mike Robinson from mm-hmm. Temple, uh, Temple's commitment to Writing the ship, in a sense, I guess, in North Philadelphia is very mm-hmm. admirable. And the work they do, uh, Paul Donneville and, and the whole team out there at Project Home, they do some great things. So that's just that pocket of the city. It will be, it will be really interesting as you kind of take this journey just to see what's out there in other neighborhoods because mm-hmm. I know about those neighborhoods because I've worked in that neighborhood. But I'm sure in West Philly there's things going on in Southwest and South Philly. Like, we struggle to find... Things sometimes in South well, Philly, South Philly even here, but I'm positive yeah. there's stuff it's going, going on. on. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it'll be great to, for you. Sometimes it's just about knowing the information, yeah. people and having the it. information. And one of the big uh, initiatives that we'll, we'll be will be done this year. I want to claim it. Uh, we're talking about uh, this repository of this type of information. So how do we get a place where oh. everyone who's looking to tap into these workforce that's development so initiatives good. can go right away you know, and say, you know, it's October, for... right? It's, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, oh, no, I should say Philly Sherm year. <laughs> <laughs> that's September to June. <laughs> <laughs> year. All right, so you guys want to jump about it. Calendar, not calendar. Patty and Keith are somewhere good. like, when? That's a very, very, very good point. That's a big distinction. Love it. Um, I have a question that actually somebody asked me today, okay. and I said I was going to save it for the show. So she has her bachelor's, and she has been considering whether to go for her master's in HR or just get the HR certification. And I know you have a lot of it. 
So, 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 so what do you think Grace should do? What, that is a great no, I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing with you. That's so funny. I'd be fine with it if she wanted, but anyway. But, uh... <laughs> and you know, that's an interesting question. I Short answer, I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all for mm -hmm. everyone. Uh, I did my certification first and then went to get my okay. my master's afterwards. Uh, I think it's about what's going to help you the most in your career. For me, I had an undergraduate major inside of human resources, so getting the certification was an easier step for me mm -hmm. because I had this foundational knowledge within it. If you didn't major in HR, uh, she to, did. She did. did yeah. um, mm -hmm. So for her, it might be easy to go straight into that certification. Certifications do require a certain um, experience right. Right, within right. it. So if you don't have those years of experience, you can only get the, the small you, you have certification. Or in some cases, you, you have to get the student level right. within it. So uh, for her to decide where am I at in my career, mm -hmm. uh, which one makes the most sense right now, which certifications am I actually eligible for mm -hmm. at this point in time, and which ones would be most marketable for me yeah. based on what I want to do. Mm -hmm. It's probably all part of the decision. Okay, I told us at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So thank you. In thinking about the the certification process, is it advantageous to someone? Let's say someone has been working as in 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 H an HR type of role for. I'm um, thinking about getting my <laughs> certification. Right. So yeah. for you know yeah. for several years, and they so let's say five years or more. Um, what advantages do you have to getting the certification at a later stage in your career where you've been doing this work for, for some time? Yeah. I think in some ways it validates. So you can get, um, they have certification for senior level for professionals as well as those who are sort of middle manager and more entry level within it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's are we talking about PHR? Cert, like is, there's two of well, them. Uh, yeah. yeah. I've been intentionally yeah. vague no, around yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All the alphabets yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's break down these acronyms. Well, no, well, SHRM so. has, and then there's a, they have a competitor now that right. they do. Sort of so oh. SHRM has the even, SHRM CP and SHRM SCP certifications. Those are the ones that are ratified by the SHRM organization, then there's one through HRCI, yeah. uh, which is the PHR and SPHR. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. got you now. Um, so. I need to do some like, research. Oh, all yeah. these, these acronyms, <laughs> I'm just like, HR, okay. okay. <laughs> um, all have their advantages, right. SHRM would say, you know what they would say. <laughs> You're SHRM. So I'm SHRM, sure, yeah. So. <laughs> uh, so within that, it it's all about just deciding about which one makes mm -hmm. the most mm -hmm. sense for you yeah, at yeah. that point in time. Cool. Right. Right. Um, so I'm thinking about, you know, pivoting into pure HR. So um, I've, you know, as a recruiter, you're kind of that anyway. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to know a lot about it anyway. Yeah, you, yeah. The legal aspects of it, and and um, when you're hiring people in, from out of state, and you're an employment, you know, um, engagement manager too, because a lot of people will come to you since you're their first contact. Mm -hmm. And so I've just been thinking, why not get my Go for it. Yeah. It is very good for someone who might have focused on a specialty for mm -hmm. a long point in time. Uh, right. and you want to show I have a broader body mm -hmm. of knowledge. Sure. Yeah. I mean, they're it, they're going to take you through the ringer within mm -hmm. that. So you're going to learn about everything from recruiting to benefits to mm -hmm. org development to change oh, management, okay. all that to say I have all of these competencies okay. within human resources versus the one that I've been working in for the past mm -hmm. few years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, I guess have to learn, so I might have to. Consider this I would well. have to be super, <laughs> over. super HR then, I'm not super recruiter then. Huh? I like super I'll HR. Keep, I think that I'll works keep well the super HR recruiter. Super recruiter HR. <laughs> you know, did I ever share with you about the time that Alberta did a two hour interview <laughs> and a mock interview session? He reduced it. It wasn't two hours. Usually he brings it up to like four, and it's four hours at one point. <laughs> <laughs> you hired a person that's uh, I, no, my thing, I, that was my thing as well i'm like this person has to be getting they out. have to be getting there, was a, line, right there now. was a line outside the door waiting for our virgin to come out i'm like it's over it's now over. that's the kind of it's service over. though that's dedicated human <laughs> dedicated. resources She's professional dedicated. absolutely She's but dedicated. can i say after that was over, that's when Kenneth asked me to be a co-host on the show. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no one else was there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If you're this committed to this, if you're this committed to this, this hour time slot will be nothing. <laughs> you can do anything. <laughs> you, you just spend two hours talking to a candidate. You, you just, this doesn't even have a resume. <laughs> so this, this one hour time slot will be nothing for you. Commitment and dedication. I love her. I love her. It's great. It's great. Jamil's done those mock interviews for us as well.
as well. Yeah. He's came out and done information sessions. They're so he's, great. They're really he, great. You know what? Is there any advice that you have out here for somebody that, that you know, I, I guess we were just speaking about this, like someone that's trying to come up through the ranks in HR. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any advice for them as far as how they should structure, I guess, even their education? We're on this big internship kick right now. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have any advice about seeking out internships, uh, I think our listeners would love to hear that. Yeah. Um, and I think the biggest advice I give to all students when I speak to them about it is you can't rely on school to get you a job, right? right. It's That's price of entry. You got to go to school and get good grades, right? That's just to get you into the career services bank of what sure. you're going through. Okay. Um, it's really about building your network up from the beginning. So the biggest advantage for me going through school was um, not necessarily that I was taking all these HR courses, which were great, but from my sophomore year, I was involved in a professional organization. I got all three of my internships in under, undergrad through connections within that organization. Oh, yeah. I got my full-time job and through that organization. I got my next full-time job through connections that I made in that way. So you need to know at an undergrad level, you should know 15 to 20 people working in your field of practice mm -hmm. that you can call readily, not just when you need something, that you actually have an authentic relationship with. Mm -hmm. So that means you gotta be talking to them and sewing into that relationship the mm -hmm. entire time. Yeah. So that when it's time for you to ask for a job, they'll say, yeah, I'll recommend, I'll recommend Tiffany over, I'll recommend right. Ken over because I know them versus yeah, I met you for 30 seconds at a career event. And it's so yeah. it's it's so much more convenient now with LinkedIn and some of the tools that are out here that allow you to stay connected to a person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because before you could meet someone at a networking event, Get you might forward. never see them yeah. again. Right. Mm -hmm. But now, even if you don't see them, you can see them virtually right. and see what's going on. And in you the can world. make a note yep. of how you met exactly. them and right. when. And, but yeah. that's a gift and a curse, though. And you, and maybe you can speak to this in your experience because you've gone from from students and now being probably hiring people and develop, building a team is that people rely on the convenience mm -hmm. as the proxy for relationship. Just as we're connected on LinkedIn does not mean I know who you are. No, right. Right. And, and, right. That's, right. and I think I that that's where, that. because if you have, I heard this crazy story, we won't go into the details. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, a seen, I heard this First term, I'm a senior match. millennial, right? Here we go. Generation, we need some generational diversity conversations around here. But um, but I heard this um, the story of this, this these two people were developed a relationship on Snapchat by sending each other Snapchat like back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. so, the, the, so I say that to say as a backdrop to thinking that that's how you develop yeah. a deep relationship. Mm -hmm. But how do you develop a deep relationship if, if I'm like, oh, I met you on LinkedIn and can you give me a job? Yeah, right. yeah. But, but you know, Tim, so. I yeah. think that's the thing, that's the separator. Mm. There, there are people that leverage multi-tiered approaches mm -hmm. to networking. Mm -hmm. So you can't just be the person that's sending something on LinkedIn. You gotta show up yeah. mm -hmm. as well. And then those will be the people that move forward and be, be involved in organizations and things of that nature because you're gonna know there'll be a there'll be a relationship. Yeah. Jamil probably goes to an event and he probably gets 15 LinkedIn invites <laughs> when he leaves. Right? Yeah. So how do I that. know who these people are? I don't. Mm -hmm. But I, I did probably meet you. I'll know that much. Mm -hmm. But then if you show up again. Right, that's right. You know, and then you show up Remind again. Me yeah, how, right, right. Remind or, me how. Or if you that. send Jamil an email saying, hey, I just heard you on the Career Seeker show. That was great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how do I get on the show? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true, right? It's all about building those relationships and, and sewing into them. If you send an email, and it doesn't, it shouldn't be daily. No one wants to be email. <laughs> that. Right. But, but, but every few yeah. months, just say, hey, just want on. to see how everything was going. Right. This is what I'm studying. Would love if we could get out, get together for coffee. The person might say, I don't have time right now. They might not even respond in some cases, but the idea that I'm going to put that energy in to show you that I want to build my network. Sure. And, and right. every once in a while, you're going to get that person that you really connect yeah. with, that's yeah. really going to be a good advocate, sponsor, or mentor Absolutely. for you. And that person will be able to help you and guide you through your search. I like that you make that distinction, advocate, mentor, yep. or sponsor. Mm -hmm. yes. And there are differences. Yeah, differences. Do, could you briefly, Take us there, yeah. like, what, what the difference is between those three? Yeah, so a mentor is someone, that's that person that's going to be really your trusted advisor. This is the person you can confide in. They're going to give you real talk advice back with you. That's that person that you're really going to be able to connect with in a one-on-one -on -one authentic manner. And they're going to help to give you really a lot of time and energy to grow in yourself. 
uh, then you have your advocates and your sponsors, and I sort of use them interchangeably within it, but these are the people who are gonna be talking about you when you're not in the room. Mm -hmm, yeah. Those are the people that are gonna be picking you up, they're gonna be raising your name for opportunities, these are the people that are going to speak to you because of the work they've experienced mm -hmm. from you. So making sure you build both of them, everyone that you're advocating and sponsoring, they might not have time to mentor you mm -hmm. in the way that you really need for it to be authentic, but they darn sure will have time to say, I know Tiffany. Yeah. 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 Have you right. thought about that? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Going through. Right. Yeah. Um, and I've had both of those in my careers. I had one of the most yeah. meaningful people in my career. He was a phenomenal sponsor for me. And every chance he got, and he was important. throwing my name but out. But that's because your reputation and your you, you spoke your reputation spoke for you. Yeah. And he didn't have to have his hands directly involved in your career growth, mm -hmm. but you he knew about you and he knew that you were you could be someone that he could put forth for an opportunity. That's right. And you don't want to let those people down. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. If they're going, right. they going to spend their social capital on you, you better make sure they get a return in, on investment in you. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. Wow, outstanding. So so Jamil Rush. Uh, please let our listeners know how they get in contact with you, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. You can follow me on LinkedIn, Jamil Rush. Um, Twitter, Jamil underscore Rush. Uh, and please no, wait, check you got to step that Twitter game up. You're yeah. not on there a lot. Yeah, my Twitter, my Twitter yeah. game is Twitter weird. is hard. <laughs> Twitter is hard. Oh, my God, it's great. So, uh, how about y'all get on, get on Instagram and then we'll talk. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Twitter okay. is great. <laughs> Um, but absolutely go to, I encourage everyone to go to the Philly Sherm website, www.phillysherm.com. Check out our events, up, w, upcoming programs. And you guys have an upcoming event that's pretty big. It's it's like pinned pen on your site right now. What is that? Uh, yeah, our next event will be coming up is October 26th. It is actually our workforce development uh, focused event. So we'll be having a great panel um, of people coming from the Workforce Development Committee, Heloise from the Chamber of Commerce, Commerce as well as Pat Clancy and a couple of others. They'll be talking about some of these talent pipelines that exist in the Philadelphia area and how we can tap into them as business and HR professionals. That'll be right at the Pyramid Club in downtown Philadelphia. Love it. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, Jamil Rush. Thank we so really much. appreciate it. The president is in the building. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, once again, it's another Career Seekers show. We do this every Wednesday from 4 to 5 live on WPPN LP Philadelphia. <laughs> Tiffany Sutherland, Alberta Bertolino, Will Martin. Uh, my name is Kenneth Johnson. I'd like to say thank you for tuning in and just kind of riding out with us this week. It's the Career Seekers show. Uh, all the Facebook followers, live streamers, come back next Wednesday and check us out. I'm not even sure uh, who we have next Wednesday, but it is a great month for us. We got Torin Ellis, we got Jody Brockington. This is the Career Seekers show. This is what we do. Thanks a lot. Talk to you next week. See you, Seekers. Later.